Hello, and welcome to Culture Shock. I'm Evan. I'm Brent. Today, what are we talking about, Brent? Talking about Mount Fuji. Mount oh, Fuji. Yes. Oh, so beautiful. The famous mountain in Japan. Certainly, the most famous mountain in Japan. One of the most famous in the world. Uh, very, now, very is, iconic. Very iconic. It's relatively near Tokyo. There's one of the reasons why it is such a, a big deal. Um, uh, so a lot of people see it. You can actually see it from Tokyo. Uh, it is also volcanic. Oh. Yes. Active. It last erupted in 1708. Ooh. So it's due. Uh-oh. <laughs> a little bit worrying. Uh-oh. Set your clocks, people. <laughs> yep. And every so often you will see um, steam rising from it uh, from afar. It's, that is a little scary. It's uh, just over 12,000 feet high, 12,388 feet high, about 3,776 3, meters oh. high. And reference in literature in Japan for centuries and centuries, but especially when the capital was moved from Kyoto to Tokyo by the Meiji Emperor in the 1680s. I'm sorry, 1860s. I'm getting all the numbers wrong this time. <laughs> um, basically, the capital had been Kyoto, so it moved over to Tokyo, and it, which had been a, a major center in Japan. And so, because it was so close to the capital, uh, folks were seeing it a lot and referencing it in, in poetry a lot. Now, as I mentioned, um, so there was this thing back in around 1600, the shogun declared that all the lords would maintain one, one residence in Kyoto and another in Tokyo. And they'd have to move back and forth between them typically every other year. Hmm. Um, so one year in Tokyo, one year in Kyoto. And Tokyo happens to be right along one of the main routes between the two. And th there's a whole political reason why he did that. You, know, mm. you imagine the whole thing where, well, gosh, if you're moving around all the time, you're not going to be able to plot quite as much. Oh. And, you know, your f family will be here while you'll be over there. So it's easier to control people that way. But the advantage was that Mount Fuji became one of the big sightseeing elements alongside that, that trip. It was pretty cool. Um, now, also famous in painting, so both... Hokusai and Hiroshige, two of the great painters, uh, painted uh, what they call the 36 views of Mount Fuji. Hmm. Um, so they say that uh, Mount Fuji is different uh, no matter where you, you, you are, no matter how you're looking at it. And so they kind of proved this by painting it from different vantage points. Hmm. So uh, each one has 36 paintings of Mount Fuji, and they painted it in different ways and other ways as well. And uh, this became an iconic way of, of understanding and seeing Fuji, is seeing it from different perspectives, in different times of the year, things along those lines, and really appreciating it. Uh, one of the neat things about the, the, uh, the mountain, as you can see, is that it's sloped differently on different sides. But it's also very gently sloped. So it has this beautiful uh, gentility to it, um, which you can just kind of appreciate from multiple different perspectives. It's a really, really gorgeous. Yeah. Could stare at that at all day, yeah, <laughs> all day exactly. long. <laughs> and the other cool thing is you can actually climb it. So you can go all the way to the top of Mount Fuji if you want to. Hmm. Does it, since it's such a gentle slope, is it is it something that you don't need special climbing? No, you can you can go right up. You know, or? like like us basically. You just can, walk, walk right up, walk the, right side up the side of the mountain. mountain. <laughs> you probably want sturdy boots and, and good clothes. But yeah, you can absolutely do that. It's about a five-hour trip up and about three hours back down. Hmm. So that's not too bad at all. Um, now, it's only open July and August to go all the way up to the top. Mm -hmm. um, any other time, it's quite dangerous to go up cold, mm -hmm. um, you know, ice, slippery uh, slopes and areas. Not a good idea, although some people do do it, and you're supposed to definitely let people know you're doing it before oh. you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not a good idea, but yeah. But you Probably go with a friend, yeah, tell absolutely. everybody you're going. In fact, <laughs> even if you're not going, uh, you know, if you're going in regular things, go with a friend. It's, it's a good mm -hmm. idea. Um, so there are four routes up, depending on how you want to do it. Mm. Um, some a little easier, some a little harder, Ooh. some more scenic than others. And there are a whole bunch of climbing trails on, um, uh, all around the base. Oh, that sounds like fun. Oh, yeah. So it's basically one big park of these trails you can, you can Is this around. a national park? Yes. So yes. it's preserved? Mm -hmm. yeah. People can't build their house halfway no. up. And, <laughs> no. <laughs> and also, I mean, there are buses going all over the place, you know, mm -hmm. up and down the mountain to, to, to uh, manage this. One of the other cool things is the huts. The huts. So there are these, they call them huts, all the way up Mount Fuji. They're actually hotels, basically. <laughs> They're these big buildings where you can stop and get refreshments, even a room for the night if you want to. Hmm. Uh, one of the reasons for this is that 
uh, it is traditional um, or considered just a, a great cultural thing to see the sunrise from the top of Mount Fuji. Oh yes. So but if you're trying to do that, it probably makes it probably a good idea to hike part of the way up, you know, sleep. <laughs> And then hike the rest of the way up in the early, early, morning. early, early hours. Yeah, exactly. Just in time for the sunrise. Yeah, so you, you can imagine how nice it is to you know, hike up in the middle of, of the evening and then, you know, relax. And, and the and sun is out. probably rising over the ocean, so yeah. you see the first gleam of light coming. Exactly. Oh, that must be an experience. Yeah, that, a little bottle of sake. <laughs> what, what, could, what could be wrong? Yeah. And you can join. There are 200,000 people who go up every year, all the way to the top. Wow. So it's a pretty big deal. Yeah. Um, and it's easy to get to, to from Tokyo, so um, it's, it's pretty easy. Does a person need to make reservations or just check in at the park? Um, you, can, you can go anytime. Uh, this is a really good question because part of the problem is how you're going to kind of get there and get up to uh, Mount Fuji. Because the problem is it's not really, because it's so large, um, you can't just, you know, uh, get a bus near, near there and walk up. You need to take a bus you know, part way up the, the bottom of the mountain to then start walking up. So you're probably going to need to at least get a, a bus ride there. But you certainly do not need to check in at the, um, uh, at the park itself. Uh, you do need to reserve it in advance if you're going to one of the huts, oh, obviously. That makes sense. Um, but other than that, yeah, you can pretty much just hike up whenever you want to. Can a person bring their own tent? If they're not staying in, a that's a good question. I don't think so. Hmm. Um, I think it would depend on where you are and what you're doing. Um, <laughs> and certainly, uh, up high in the mountain, probably not a good idea unless you really know what you're doing. <laughs> Experienced <Yeah. laughs> campers. <laughs> yes, totally. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, it's certainly one of the you know the major um, oh. landmarks of Japan. Absolutely beautiful. Easy to see from where you're going. And even if you're just taking uh, a Shinkansen train from Tokyo to Kyoto, you will probably see Mount Fuji in the distance. It's a, it's a beautiful sight. Now, one of, one of the things uh, about being on the mountain is mm. it's harder to see the mountain itself, right. where if you're at a distance, it's much easier to take in the whole view of the mountain. It's a very good point. Yeah, if you want to take photos of Mount Fuji, don't go to Mount Fuji. <laughs> go near Mount Fuji and take your photos. Because once you get onto the base of the mountain, you can't see. You see, you see just more yeah. up, more up. <laughs> and there are a, a series of stations up Mount Fuji, um, and that are that, that function sort of as like bus stops, if you will, or or pauses up the side. And I think it's up to around the fifth station is where you can actually like see the mountain mm -hmm. uh, and, and really kind of enjoy it. And anything beyond that, you're kind of on the mountain. Yeah, I think, I think uh, buses, in fact, go up to the fifth stage, yeah. but then above that, no buses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not going to get a bus up there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I, I want to climb it now. <laughs> yeah, me too. Absolutely. And uh, Mount Fuji is, uh, um, in terms of getting there and getting around, uh, one of the difficulties is, is if you're staying, say, in Tokyo, hmm. it's going to take a long time for you to get um, a decent way up Mount Fuji, even by bus. Hmm. Uh, so it's a serious day trip just to get from Tokyo up to, say, the fifth station and then back to Tokyo by the evening. So maybe plan out a couple days. Absolutely. It, well, certainly if you want to do it, plan an entire day for it. It's going to be hard for you to do anything else during that day. Hmm. Um, but you can certainly do it that way. But if you want to really climb up it, you're going to see the sunrise. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, why not? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So that's Mount Fuji. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us. Hope to see you on the top of Mount Fuji. Absolutely.